Today is Beetlecam's birthday. It is 10 years since I finished building the first Beetlecam. In this video, I thought I'd tell you about some of the adventures that Beetlecam and I have shared over the past 10 years. So to start with, why did I create Beetlecam? Well, it all started while I was trying to capture photographs of wildlife that were a bit different. And what I discovered is that by crawling up to animals and getting closer and then using a wide angle lens, um, I was able to capture a much more intimate perspective, which really appealed to me. And so I did this with animals where it was safe for me to get close, so animals like penguins and meerkats. At the time, this sort of close up wide angle perspective was not commonly seen in wildlife photography. And so the images had a lot of impact for me. But what I really wanted to do was capture this perspective of iconic African wildlife. The sort of creatures that might maul or trample me to death if I were to crawl up to them. And so for me, the solution to this problem was simple. Build a remote control buggy, stick my camera on top, and then use that to get my camera close to the wildlife. And so when it was finished, my brother and I booked a trip to Tanzania, and it was quite a leap into the unknown. I had no idea whether the animals would let the beetle cam anywhere near them, whether they would destroy it straight away. But I thought in order to try and get something different, it was worth giving it a go. So actually underneath this shell is what was the first beetle cam. And on that first expedition, it didn't have this shell. It was just my camera with a cloth cover on top of the remote control buggy. And so the camera was very vulnerable and exposed. So on day one in Tanzania, we came across some elephants. And almost straight away, the beta cam started to capture the photos of elephants that I'd really been dreaming of. And I couldn't believe that this was actually working. Now on day two, my excitement got the better of me and we came across some lions. And in retrospect, what happened next was quite inevitable, but at the time I didn't know any better. So I deployed the beetle cam and it got a few meters away from the land cruiser that I was in. And so this young lioness just marched straight up to the beetle cam, leant over, clamped her jaws around the camera, picked it all up and ran off with it. And I thought that was the end of the project. Fortunately, we were able to follow her through the bush and recover the beetle cam. So this is the camera from that day and it's got two incisor holes in the back and one in the front here. And this one in the back just missed the memory card. And so the pictures that the camera captured survived. So when I got home and published the pictures, the response was really incredible and they were widely circulated. And so I knew this perspective really was resonating with people. I also knew that if I could build a lion-proof version of Beetlecam, that the sort of photos I'd be able to get would be incredible. So in 2011, I built this shell and bolted it on top of the original beetle cam and took it out to Kenya with the sole purpose of photographing lions with it. So on day one in Kenya, we came across this impressive male lion guarding his kill. And with my heart in my mouth, I sent beetle cam out, wondering if I was sending it to its doom again. But fortunately, this lion completely ignored it, didn't pay any attention to it whatsoever and allowed me to get these incredible close-up photos which were better than anything I could have dreamed of. Over the course of the trip I discovered that every lion is different and many did ignore Beetlecam completely allowing me to get more shots like this but then others were much more inquisitive or playful and would try and bat Beetlecam, chew it, carry it off and so Beetlecam did sustain a few battle wounds during the course of the trip. But its greatest test actually came when photographing cubs. And so I knew cubs were going to be a really good subject because they'd be very playful and inquisitive and would probably come really close to the buggy. The first cubs that I came across were quite young ones, maybe three or four months old. And they were great subjects. They came up, really investigated the buggy, allowed me to get lots of shots. And they weren't so old that they were a threat to the buggy. Then right towards the end of the trip, I came across some much older cubs, I think around eight or nine months. And they were almost the end of beetle cam. As I was trying to 
evade them and capture pictures at the same time. One managed to flip beetle cam over and was then able to pick it up from the wheel. And it then ran off with it, uh, followed by all its brothers and sisters. And I thought I was never going to see the buggy again, but fortunately we were able to search the bush and find it. And so Beetle Cam lived to fight another day. Those first two Beetle Cam expeditions really did launch my career, so to speak. So in 2012, my wife and I moved to Zambia for a year, and I decided to rebuild Beetle Cam from the ground up. And this is the version of Beetle Cam that I took with me. It had some more advanced capabilities like remote camera tilt and this shell that could be disassembled to make it easier to pack. And my aim for that year was to use Betacam to try and photograph some of the shyer, more elusive creatures, in particular leopards and African wild dogs. African wild dogs were a subject that I'd been trying to photograph for years, but I'd never been able to track them down. They have huge territories and they move vast distances from day to day and so actually bumping into them you have to be really lucky. And it took me about three months in South Luangwa National Park in Zambia before I finally found them for the first time. And it was in a perfect area for beetle cam, nice and open and flat. And so I deployed the buggy and the dogs crowded round it briefly with those big satellite dish ears focused in on the buggy trying to figure out what it was. And I got this photo, which is one of my favorite ever beetle cam photos. But what I was really dreaming of now was getting this perspective of a leopard. Over the course of the year, I got to know this young leopard and her mother very well. This leopard was very playful, inquisitive, and bold for a leopard. The time I spent with this young leopard watching her grow up are some of my fondest memories from the year. And so after Zambia, my next trip was to Sri Lanka to photograph elephants. And that turned out to be this beetle cam's last foray out into the wild. During my time in Africa, elephants had always been very respectful of beetle cam and never tried to touch it or damage it. And so I assumed the elephants in Sri Lanka would be the same. And so I didn't bother packing the shell, I just took the beetle cam base to make my luggage a bit lighter. But it turns out the Asian elephants in Sri Lanka were very different to the African elephants. And as soon as they saw beetle cam, they crowded around it and stomped on it. They destroyed my 5D Mark III. Let me show it to you actually. Completely snapped the lens off, broke the camera and flattened the beetle cam. And so later that year, I created what is now the modern day version of beetle cam with this much more professional looking shell. And to this, I added a long range wireless video feed so I could see exactly what the camera was seeing. And here's some footage and stills from the first trip with this beetle cam in the Serengeti. At around this time, I started to feel like I'd done that close up wide angle perspective with the animal looking into the lens. And so I wanted to find new ways to use beetle cam. And around about that time, digital cameras had really come on so far that it was opening up this world of nocturnal wildlife photography. By using high ISOs, it was becoming possible to expose animals and also the night sky in one frame. And so in 2015, I undertook a project in Lua Plain National Park in the west of Zambia. And so one of my key aims was to use beetle cam to capture portraits of animals at night that also exposed the night sky. To illuminate the animals, I used an off buggy flash, which I was actually holding myself in the vehicle. And so I'd get the beetle cam in front of the animal. When the beetle cam took a photo, it would wirelessly trigger the flash that I was holding, and that would illuminate the foreground. Even with a high ISO of 3200 or 6400, I still needed a fairly long shutter speed of around 10 to 20 seconds to really expose the stars. And so what I did is I just left the shutter open and as long as there is no ambient light, even if that animal moves after the flash, there's no light falling on it to expose it on the sensor. Now when the moon had risen a bit, it would brighten the sky. And so during the course of that long exposure, I then started to get the shadow of the animal where it blocked out the light from the sky. After African Wildlife at Night, my next project involving Beetle Cam was in Savo in 2017 and 2018. 
And that project focused on the elephants of Savo, and in particular some of these incredible last remaining big Tusker elephants. And what I wanted to do was use this Betocam perspective to really accentuate the tusks stretching down towards the camera. And for this project I partnered with the Savo Trust, who were working to protect these incredible elephants. And they were able to help me track down a few of these remarkable individuals. And I was able to capture these shots of this female elephant uh, and also the largest bull tusker in Savo. And he may have the heaviest tusks on any elephant alive today. It was a real privilege and an honor to see these animals and capture their photographs. And so I'm incredibly grateful to the Savo Trust and Kenya Wildlife Service for helping me capture these images and of course for keeping these animals safe. And so the output from that project was this book, Land of Giants. And really this book is designed to show people that these elephants are still out there and it's not too late to save them. And so what's next? Well, right now I'm working on a camera trapping project, but after this, it's gonna be my most ambitious project yet, involving not one, but two brand new versions of Beetlecam. So if you wanna follow along my future adventures with Beetlecam, please subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Say happy birthday to Beetlecam in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video.